The Bentley Blur, one of the most iconic cars of the pre-war years. Developed by Sir Tim Birkin in, in a quest for more speed, uh, in conjunction with Amherst Villiers, he attached a supercharger to the front of the car. This gave the car almost 240 brake horsepower above the 175 brake horsepower for the road car. And at Brooklands, it took the lap record at just over 137 miles an hour. Bentley owns team car number two, the most iconic, the most valuable, and the most campaign team car of the four. The car took part in many endurance races in 1930, most notably driven by Sir Tim Birkin in the 1930 Le Mans. Famously fast, but sadly unreliable, the car never won a race. Today, the car remains taxed and tested, and driven on a regular basis. Recently, in our centenary year of 2019, the car completed the Melia Melia without missing a beat. As part of the, the rebirth of Malino, um, the oldest coach builders in the world, um, we were looking for something to do with the ingenuity, the creativity and the engineering skills that we had developed um, through the restoration of the, the Corniche. So we realised we had the perfect opportunity. Our a team blower needed a bit of a restoration and so we were able to then utilise the fact that the car had been taken apart to be able to scan and measure and document every single part, which is exactly the detail you need to start a recreation project. In late 2019, we dismantled the original team car, uh, scanned all the individual components, collated all the information into one CAD model. From that, we learnt a lot of history about the parts, a lot of history about the car. The chassis itself was twisted uh, from several accidents that it had had uh, in, its, in its racing career. We carefully restored and put the car back together uh, and in doing so we spent uh, over 300 hours cleaning the car. When we'd learnt everything we could, we immediately started the engineering of Car Zero. Uh, we started the assembly of that car seven months ago uh, in a specially set up Mulliner workshop. We used the CAD model that we created and working with specialists around the country uh, and experts to create nearly 2,000 parts required for the car. We used a supplier called Israel Newton and Sons who uh, produced boilers for uh, engines, uh, steam engines. They used the techniques that we needed to produce the, uh, the chassis authentically. So they're hand-formed, hand-heated and hammered chassis. They're techniques that go back over 100 years and they're also using original tools and, and fixtures for those parts. The same with the radiator. So uh, we used a company called Vintage Radiators. Again, using all hand-forming and techniques that were uh, of the period when this car was originally created. So over the last seven months, we spent nearly 40,000 man-hours producing the car that you see today. And we're incredibly proud of the techniques that we've used to produce this car. Recreating designs from the 1920s is an incredibly difficult and complex process. Fortunately, here in Malina, we have a large group of talented craftsmen working in metal and in wood and in leather that enable us to, to utilize those, those skills and look back at the designs from the past to create this, this new car. The new blowers have a brand new ash frame. Those frames have been taken into the workshop here and those expert craftsmen have retrimmed them using the same techniques and the same methods as used in the original development of the car. So the seats have been trimmed with an oxblood red bridge of weir leather and they're also stuffed with about 10 kilograms of horsehair in the same way that the original seats were. We have created a brand new car 
that has all the essence and the, the engineering and the design of a, of a car that's nearly 100 years old. And to see that come to life and to be, to be recreated is an amazing experience. We're incredibly proud of what we've managed to achieve here. When I look at this car now and see the detail and the quality of every component that we've created, it's a true testament to both the team at Mulliner and the community of collaborative partners that we've worked with to bring this dream to reality. When we set out on this project for the continuation car, we never imagined how well it would turn out. The craftsmanship and the engineering of this car is absolutely world class. But the most important thing is, of course, the way it feels on the road. So now it's my great privilege to be the first person to drive it on the Bentley closed roads. And I think I'll go and do that right now, if you'll excuse me. I'm pretty sure that both Sir Tim Birkin and Walter Owen Bentley would be proud of what we have achieved in homage to their original achievements.